on. It is, of course, going to be, I do believe, on Inferno. And it is going to be Dinko and myself to bring you guys the action. Now, Dinko, just to finish my thought there. The, the Dust 2 not getting picked up. Uh, is it kind of like a sign of Invictus being like, yeah, we don't want to take chances there. Yes, our Inferno is not the best, but at least we know what we're doing wrong. Or is it them maybe being a little wary of a potential upset from the side of after? No, I, I think, I think honestly, Invictus think they're good on Inferno. I think they honestly think which, they can Which is weird, because I think they're the only five players on the planet who think they're really good on Inferno. Exactly. They, they pick it up, and they, they keep going for it. Uh, they keep letting it through, and yeah, fair enough. I mean, they're, they're going to be better than after on this map, so I don't really think it matters where we go. Dust 2 is a map where you would give a small chance to after to perform, so I think Inferno should be one they have no problems with, but Bingo is going to start things off with an opening kill on the Shao Sai Gay. Oh, that, that was a little weird from Shao Sage. Eh? He's just walking solo. out alone. <laughs> yeah, he just walks out alone. And that was a slow walk out against the USPs. That's just basic aimbot. A nice flashbang, but Viva still gets the kill. He wasn't really blinded. Now the question is, are they going to check, Dingo? Are they going to check? Of course Viva's going to check. That's why I love this guy at times. And he's going to find both the kills. That was uh, that was rough from after gaming. That was really rough. You get the opening pick. It was a freebie from Shao Sage. And then they lose two players immediately to the star himself, Viva, who still has a Molotov and a smoke to work with, mind you. Forty-five seconds, and here come Invictus into the B bomb site. Marek, the solo hold, his rotation for his teammates coming over to this B bomb site right now. They've got here in force. They've got here quite quickly, Blair. They've been able to reinforce the the retake attempt. At least this bomb should be going down, no problem. And with Invictus having the man advantage. It's going to be very difficult to hold this off. Got to go back in, and well, Flying's going to get a double. Flying's okay. going to tear them to shreds. Flying in the series, he's going to absolutely destroy them. Again, I didn't get to talk about it in the pregame, but Flying is just going to manhandle this team. The thing about Flying again, right? I feel like we've always set up Viva to be the star of this team, but it's been Flying. Viva's the X Factor. He's the guy, if he shows up, Invictus are going to have a good day in the office, but Flying is the, the foundation of this team and just his i think he's got better his skill as well than, than viva to be honest oh yeah you, you you have to agree after all the games we've seen from them so far i wasn't actually a big fan of the post plan for invictus all four players on the spawn site and i'm like okay you know after gaming have a chance and flying's like yeah no i'm just gonna kill everyone with the glock as we do have the four spy coming in from after a number of nades he's galore and uh, five deagles now there's one team we talk about. Is this one region we talk about being quite nasty with the one digs? It has to be the Asian region, Dinko. We've seen the Thai teams. We've seen the Chinese teams. We've even seen the Singaporean side just being absolutely ruthless, brutal with the Desert Eagles. However, Invictus, they seem to be playing this one right. Although, I'm not a big fan of how Destroyer is so isolated. But he's going to do the smart thing. Just hug, hug the corner of Moto and make his teammates do the work, but Bingo is being quite a thorn. They know they still have another player to contend with, and it's going to be Sakai, and his deagles are dealing death and destruction, and it's not looking good already for Invictus. They get the bomb down, Dinko, but it is a 1v3. It's all on bottle. The new addition to the team is going to find two, looking for the third, and he's going to clutch it out. The 1v3, an expensive round, but, but bottle, he brings it home. Yeah, definitely expensive, but Bottle getting over the line at least. That's going to be the round for Invictus. And after gaming, they're going to have themselves a little bit of cash left over in reserves. So the buy into the next round is certainly going to be coming through, but this, this is getting a little bit worrisome for me. You know, we're seeing what's going on right now for Invictus. They were definitely dropping a few too many players, but they mm -hmm. get it over the line nonetheless. And that's all that matters, because they come into this round, obviously it's not going to be the full buy, in fact, it's the full eco coming in from after gaming. So this should be a round where Invictus pick it up cleanly. They look to the next one with money in their bank accounts. And this should be a 3-0 start for Invictus Gaming. Yeah, very, very expensive round, and this is the one where they need to kind of like recover whatever they lost. It is a full eco, just the five USPs, and uh, it's kind of like a, a semi Stack towards this A bomb site, although they're all kind of separated. And destroyer is going to check the angle. Of course, he is. Sakai is going to be found out. And uh, if you're going to, you know, just be on a full eco, then I'd rather they just go for the gamble stack. You know, even just going for the the pyramid stack towards B or something similar to that, right? Just try and maximize the chances. Instead of, right. Yeah, instead of just sitting 
and just just feeding free kills to Invictus, especially with the SMGs. They're just farming mm. cash right now. Yeah, I, I hate when teams approach a USP round with the mentality that you would into a normal round, right? Because it's just not going to work out. You're going to get absolutely wrecked. So, yeah, I, I like gambles. I like stacks in these kind of rounds where you just stack together. Mob mentality, strength in numbers. Maybe they come your way and you end up getting a rifle. Who knows? But definitely playing in the default, you're, you're kind of yourself out of the round. Must feel weird for Oi. I was so confused there for a second. <laughs> when I see Oi here on the CT side, I was like, wait, hold on. And Victor's on the T side, but... Yeah, he's, uh, he's moved on over to, to after gaming. We didn't really talk about that storyline. We didn't really paint that picture. We didn't, we didn't have too much time to, to do so. But Oi, obviously just an, an ex Invictus player. We'll see how the head to head goes between Bottle and Oi. The, the, the interesting thing is like, you, you could kind of assume stuff like, oh, you know, Oi probably knows all the inner workings of Invictus and he's going to have plans ready for them. But I'm like, yeah, you know, I don't think Invictus knows their own inner working. So I don't think it's going to be too much of a, of a hindrance for Invictus with uh, one of their old teammates playing against them. So we do see early control towards Banana being exerted by Mr. Shao Sage, but Marek's going to spot him. I think he saw him on the jump there. And right before that, we saw Wang with the AWP find the pick. So... Early kills going the way of after gaming. Looking good so far in the first full buy round. Marek and Oi Saber just playing together. They have a bit of utility as well. Invictus right now with the, the two smokes, the three mollies they have. They just might go for this uh, B hit and at least try to get the bomb down. So far, so good from after in terms of how they're approaching this setup. Builds up their press, and while Marek is going to find one, they walk in one by one, provide him two very easy kills, and a simple flash buying from Oi just helps him out. Flying the last remaining player, one versus five, cannot win this round. What a terrible round from Invictus. Yeah, the five players just like pouncing on him. There was no chance for it. And I have to agree, that was a very strange round for Invictus, considering. Uh, the money wasn't great. I mean, they're going to be able to buy up right now, but it's still not going to be ideal considering how low Viva is. Oh yeah, he saw Shao Saga just jump up there. Uh, you know, you lose four players in the second round. They want to take this a little bit more smarter, a little bit more safer. You have rifles. It's not just like, you know, you had like four MAC-10 just go rushing in. And I feel like for Invictus, you need... If there's one player you need to respect a little bit, this man. This man right here with his white magic wand. White and orange, rather. The Asimov, the classic. He has to be respected. Because if you don't give him respect, he's just going to be uh, just taking you apart. And I feel like he's the best offer in the server right now. I'd probably agree. I mean, Victors don't really have one that I'm a big fan of. I think Viva's good on the AWP. Destroy is obviously proficient with it, but... And they're not AWPers, in my opinion. You know, they're just players that can pick it up. They don't really have an AWPer on Invictus. And over here for After Gaming, well, Wang's sick. It's going to be all getting the opening kill onto Viva. And advantage picked up here for After. And Invictus is going to turn their attentions back to B again. They've got three players in Banana early on. We're trying to get later to the round now, but we have one prong over towards the A-bomb site. Invictus are a man down and looking pretty rough right now. So you have to get mauled again. Oi, shoulder peeking. He's actually traded positions this time with Marek. They're taking turns of who gets to play CT. Smoke goes down for the cross. Stole, stole the attack here from Invictus. And that's going to pull a rotation back over to the B bomb side. Wang on his way. And Invictus getting their fourth player now gathering with them. But 25 seconds blood. As soon as this smoke fizz, they have to go. And Oi knows that. The flash bang. Oh, he just gets hard checked. Oh, he's going to be asking questions of Marek. How that's happened, but it doesn't matter. Marek gets a double kill. This should be the round now. That should be enough to win. Bottle with another kill. It's Marek going down and the bomb will get planted. Where's the rotation? Why is it so slow from after gaming? I'm assuming they hadn't spotted the bomb out, but at that point, you send in a player immediately to ensure the plan doesn't take place, considering the work Marek did. And I have to agree, it was a very slow rotation. Although Bottle and Shao Sage are playing up close. The flash is a little too short, though, and Bottle's good for one. Good for two! But Aww. Sakai's there to save the day. That got unnecessarily close, considering the heroics of Marek getting two kills and delaying that take. But again, round will go the way of after gaming. However, 
Uh, they have built up a little bit of cash. The thing is, for Invictus, we might be just seeing the pistols coming out this time around. And after gaming, they have, at least for the time being, stemmed the bleeding, Dinko. Yeah, that's just... Uh, that has to be a big haul for Marek. He's obviously like Ole good down there, but the fact that he gets two kills, that, that saves the day. That's where Aftu that can win the round. That was also a terrible flashbang, by the way. Oh, yeah. He's kind of waiting. I, it would have been good enough. Like, it would have been effective, but... I like the idea. The idea yeah. was great. It just, well, you need to be a little bit more deeper there, buddy. So Invictus, off to a pretty bad start after the first three rounds. After gaming, I have to say, have been playing pretty good Counter-Strike. Now, that's something we don't usually say about this team. But right now, they're playing good CT setups. You look at this on the A-bomb side. Real nice setup. It's a full stack over here with four players. Just the one player over towards B. You've got Marek just kind of jiggle peeking from the car, getting that information early. Because Invictus have been backhanded every single time they went B over the last couple of rounds, they definitely predicted a hit. No right in thinking that. Gonna be Wang with the kill onto Bottle. Destroyer gets one on the Tech 9, but it's Wang just delivering. But flying, he's got himself into the pit, and now Wang's under pressure going for oh. the no scope. He's under a lot of pressure, still hits the no scope, and he eventually goes down to flying. But it's all on Marek. A one versus two coming back in from the archway. And he doesn't know about the library. And it's the deadly librarian of Shao Sagay that takes him away. How cool would it be to have like a... To have a superhero who is a librarian by, by day. So it sounds like, like a good a sort of like spy actually, children's book, right? Actually, no. Well, Wonder Woman was a librarian. Fair she enough. was. She was in, like, I think one of the, the, the public libraries in whatever city she is from. Uh, there we go. So, Shaosage is Wonder Woman. Boom. Uh, <laughs> more importantly... Oh, oh, my! That is... That is filth! What is that? What is the reaction time for Viva? Oh, my lord. <laughs> Wang. You just got slapped, son. Oh, my lord. The money. I can't believe it's so far gone for the CT side. It's but, just one, two rounds in a row, just boom, gone. That, that, that four players at A, Dinko, and you said the setup was good, but they just got picked apart, and that is... I feel like that's a very bad sign. A very bad um, sign of things to come. Nice flashbang. <laughs> it's just always oh, Saber finds flying, flying, oh, just dancing guy, around. Don't do it dabbing. to him. Oh, don't do it! Oh, my... Oh, money in the bank. Money in the bank, baby. And considering how rough it looked there after the first two opening kills, uh, I mean, you know what? Two casualties? Uh, after game, he's going to be happy with that. But for Invictus, is a 5-2 lead. They have managed to kind of grind back after winning just with the pistols. For after gaming, the buy is going to be coming. I want to see the shot again. This is so fast, man. This is so fast. He was even looking... What? What? I know we have the Go TV. Like, you know, it's always a little bit different. But still, even if he saw it from his POV, that would have been a sick flick. Marek jumps spotting, sees one in banana. Doesn't throw the smoke, instead hesitates and comes back into a more passive angle on the B-bomb site itself. What's the board? Invictus taking their time. They feel like they are in a position, they've got the opportunity where if they pick this up, they will be uh, dominating at the start of Inferno. They will have themselves a very convincing lead indeed. There'll be absolutely no problems for this side. And, you know, you have to agree with Tom. As much as we joke about him jinxing the whole situation, he is correct in assuming or laying out the land that this should be the quickest day of PAL so far. We've got the three best teams playing some of the worst teams in the tournament. So this should be a, a relatively quick affair. But this is where these younger teams, these teams worth not as much going for them, will have a lot to prove, right? And that this is where they're going to put the most work in. If you're looking at opponents, right, you know you're going to have to, to fight against the mid-table, but these are the big names, right? These are the ones you want to take down, that you want to impress. And that's a nice little peek down into his middle from Bingo. It's sort of destroyed. Now the push comes through from Shao Sekei. Marek out of there. Shao Sekei, a second kill. What? Well, oh, he just got him appears out of nowhere. Was he just <laughs> sitting there or did he come through the smoke? I have no idea. He came idea. through the smoke, but, but, but the timing on that, it looked like just like hey, uh, a reverse Houdini. <laughs> Shao Sage, man, like, I, I want to give a lot of credit to this guy, right? He's been around the scene for such a long time. He can op, he's an in-game leader, he can also entry, the guy does everything. And you have to give him some credit as, uh, Bingo, nice pre-fire, but Viva decapitates him. 
Finds another kill. Finally, Sakai replies. He to gets a kill beyond the, beyond the grave, Dinko. And he nails a nade. Two. And Shao Sage just clotheslines Wang. I want to yeah. see that second kill for Shao Sage. Where did he come from? <laughs> I think Oi just probably like went out of the smoke, but he was crouching. I have no idea. What, what a weird, weird play to be involved in. And I think there was a flash, but Shao Sage wasn't blind one bit. He looked away. Bit. Yeah. I think it, when you flick to the right to look away I mean, from the, the flashbang, the... that's like the timing <laughs> in which Oi appeared in front of him and he kind of turns back and he's looking right at it. But he's been involved in quite a few jump scares in the last two days, hasn't he? Oh, yeah. Oh, the s was hilarious. <laughs> Tom and Mitch. Was like, what? <laughs> that, was, that was brilliant. That was, that was fantastic stuff, but here, here we, we go. go. He's Charles there in the flash and he walks out. Yeah, here we go. Yeah, flash looks pops a little, behind. Yeah, okay. <laughs> He's like, hey, well, hold on. <laughs> What's just Shouts happened like, here? Oi! Oi! Where do you come from? <laughs> must, feel, must feel weird for Oi to be in a, this position right now. You, you, we just got to the final of the last pal. Then he's just on after gaming, <laughs> playing against his old team. Sucks to be him. Sucks to be him. My shots coming out from Viva to close it out. Let's see the second peak, though. Oh, the timing was terrible there. Like, if you picked a second later, the nade would have taken care of him. But, you know, no harm, no foul. Invictus, they uh, they have hemorrhaged a few players. Some of the wins have looked a little rough, but they are starting to build up a semblance of an economy. Shao Sagi and Viva, an average of about $7,000 between the two of them, flying in the bottle. They have a little bit in the bank as well. All the destroyer uh, is kind of broke right now. But they have the weapons. And for the side of after gaming, it is a light investment. You have the deagles and the pistols, but we saw how much damage they can deal with, this, with these pistols. And I'm a fan of this, Dinko. I, I'm a fan of them just going for kind of like a gamble stack towards B. Uh, although, Shao Sage once again going to be poking and prodding, trying to draw something. And uh, one smoke taken care of. I would like to see a solid anti-eco from Invictus. I feel like they're one, they've been one of the weaker teams when it comes to these sort of like anti-ecos. And uh, one of the counterparts from China, Vici, have been the best team when it comes to anti egos I, like. I, I don't think I've seen maybe one round in between like four, out of four or five maps where Vici have lost to a four spy. Apart from that, their, their anti egos have been solid. That is, again, if you don't count that Hailu match, because, you know, Hailu. Oh, well, why? There we go. With the headshot, <laughs> takes down Shas again. Now they move forward. Bingo swings into the open. And takes one kill on the ball. Switches out to the AK-47. Now two man advantage in play here for after. It'll be a good kill from flying. Gets rid of Sakai. Now man advantage. <laughs> Bele is followed up for the CT side. And second kill. This time it's starting to look a little worried now. Destroying Viva. They have lost three players on their team, and Viva sprints to the site. He's been spotted. Marek not taking the fight. Instead, he's going to let that sit for a while. Destroyer, he's going to walk forward, catching up Marek, who was probably, probably could have waited a little bit there for his teammates, but he was around the corner nonetheless. He loses his head. And now Destroyer fighting in the middle. Oh, he gets one. It's going to be wine going down, but it's Viva into the one versus two. He has to win this clutch, and he backs up at the wrong time, but he still finds the kill. He looks behind him, and now just one more, and Viva gets out of position. The flash bounces to the left side, and Viva looking to secure the one versus two clutch, but he's overrun by Oi, his ex-teammate taking the win for after. It's a third round on the board. Why doesn't he scope in? <laughs> Why is he looking for the no scope? I don't get it. <laughs> Oh, or he could have fallen in back. I think he could have delayed that. He could have played from the site. He saw the player out. That wasn't well played from Viva. I mean, the first shot, nuts. Pure filth. Pure disgusting shots. Like 180, immediate flicks around, fast go, whatever. The second one, the 1v1, he could have played that way better. But overall, I feel Invictus could have played that round so much better. They lose the first player, and we see... Uh, who, was, who was it? I think it was uh, Bottle come just running into the smoke into B. With no information. I mean, that just sloppy counter strike from Invictus. And yeah, the after gaming, they punished them for it. Deservedly so. They were, we're talking about them building up an, uh, you know, some some money, having some money in the bank, and it's once again just been kind of like stripped clean. Flying in Chao Saga and Viva, they have like about you know, fifteen hundred, two thousand dollars remaining. If they lose this, they're gonna be forced to eco, and that's gonna allow after gaming the opportunity to kind of come back into this half. Because it is still Invictus leading quite substantially, six to three.
Here they come. Lying around the corner playing from CT spawn. Should be good for at least one hit. He has a fantastic player on the AWP and there's the kill. Just a little bit of shots that get comes around the corner. Wang able to find the kill. Brilliant stuff for Marek as well. He's been really impressive on that anchor on the B-bomb site. Now flying, trying his best. He'll be spraying away through the smoke. Catches Wang. Now needs a quick kill towards the backside player. If he wins this fight, he has a chance to win the round. But he almost had to find it immediately in that flashbang. That's his death sentence. Bingo sprints through Banana. And honestly, this is an early sign of what is going to be probably a, a close affair, at least for this first half, because Invictus look pretty dire right now on this T side. You know, they've got enough rounds that they looked okay at the start of this, but for me personally, Blood, they, they look a little rough right now. Oh, yeah, they do. Like, some of these players are weird. Of course, that was brilliant from... I'm, I'm not sure about why Marek would go for the full commit spray. I mean, it's great he got two kills there, but... I feel it's unnessary. Bingo was a hero here. The flashbang saving his teammate and he just pushes in and gets the kill on the final player or else, you know, the 1v3 could have gotten a little... What is Shao Sage doing? How is he just giving free frags? That, this is just very sloppy work from Shao Sage. A guy who we keep singing praises of, so being how experienced he is and whatnot. That's just weird stuff. Wang spotting players out. He's going to find one. He gets taken down. Now the Tech Nines could be dangerous, but... The threat will be neutralized. Viva, bottle. Oh, he's going to come running around, and that's a free kill for Viva. Now, they know where Viva is, but bingo. I don't even know if he saw him through the gap there, and Bottle's managed to sneak his way behind through the library. If he turns around, it's a free frag. Spots a player out. M4 picked up. I don't know why he's not swapping over to the M4. Is he going for the... <laughs> you deserve that, Bottle. You deserve that. You deserve that. You could have got the kill. He was going for the knife, Dinka. He was 100% going for the knife. And he had an M4 as well. He's still stuck with the, with the CZ. Decisions. <laughs> Bad decisions. Yeah. When we go into round number 12 and Invictus Gaming. What a weird buy it is. Three AK-47s, a Tech-9 for Viva, a Deagle for Bottle. But then again, it is Invictus, so let's see what they can do with it. Could be enough, and Shao Sege, he has been a shining light, a pillar of support for this Invictus team over towards this V-Bomb site. He's going to be trying to help make it work again. It's going to be Viva with a Tech-9, actually, shutting down Marek. I don't really know how I feel about that peak from Marek, but he goes down nonetheless. And now Sakai up in the apartments trying to hold off this attack from Destroyer. He has to get out of there. Your team has just got an opening kill. You cannot throw that away. Yeah, that'd be dumb. Uh, I agree with you. The the, the peak there from Marek wasn't... He, he's been good so far on, on the, the B-bomb side. He's been pretty solid, actually. But yeah, that was unnecessarily aggressive. Uh, you knew there were a couple of players there. And especially when a CT, that you were way more... Like, for the Ts, it's just one angle to shoot at, right? Like, this the, that particular spot. And for you, you, you have a pretty much wider uh area to kind of like scan with your rifle and it just doesn't make sense mathematically it's wang he's gonna land he's gonna need to land his shot and he's missing it dinko he's not finding anything it's flying he's gonna find always saber wang well he does get a kill but it's gonna be a little too late bingo though replies back with a frag through the smoke but it's still man advantage for the t's bingo trying to go for the wall bang waiting for reinforcements to arrive in the form of sakai he's got a flash smoke's gonna dissipate and he just goes to the peak he could have waited for a flash he could have waited for a flash. His teammate had a flash. Why? Bingo, why? Why have you done this? I mean, it would have been hard anyway in a 2v3, but, you know, maximize your chances, guys. Use the utility you have. Your teammate had a nade and a flashbang. And it's begun, blah. The mind warping <laughs> begins in map number one. It's too early in the day. It's my... my... <laughs> I'm almost out of coffee already. <laughs> oh boy. He's actually just pouring an entire instant coffee uh, but like into a mug. He doesn't have much coffee. That that mug looked kind of small. Yeah, but but I have an entire like uh you know you know one of those uh, yeah, portable I, French press yeah, uh, yeah, French yeah. press things. So I just keep pouring into my cup. Well, oh, nice shots from Viva, though. Yeah, he has been hitting some really nice shots. He started that round off well for the side, and he closes it as well. Now, after, take a look at what they've got. It's a couple of Deagles, P250s. They do have money. 
in the bank. So they will be buying into the next round. This is all about doing as much damage as they can. And to bring the round close. Break down that economy of Invictus. Because it's not in a good spot right now. They want to try and pick this round up cleanly. And that's a good flash buying. But luckily, Viva still finds the kill. Marek blinds oh. his own teammates slightly there. But Shouts out. Okay, what an idiot. He's down to 16 HP. How did Sakai survive that? Did he just drop down straight into a crosshair of, uh, I think it was Destroyers? Yeah, how, how, how is he alive? How do you only take like 24 points of damage? Think? Sorry, 34 points of damage. That doesn't make any sense to me. Sprinkling the toes with a couple of bullets. Nate's oh. gonna do <laughs> no damage. And he's done for. He's gonna be pushed out of his position. Gets taken down. Now this is much cleaner. Much cleaner from Invictus. Just Oi and Marek left. And uh, like you said, they're going to ha be having all the money in the world to go for a buy into the final round of this. Uh, actually, not final round, into the penultimate round of this half. So they're just going to be going for some exits here, trying to deal a bit of damage. Because again, if you look at the money for Invictus, they don't want to lose too many weapons here. Because, you know, uh, if you lose a couple of guns here, they're going to rebuy into the next round. And then if you lose that round, they're going to be broke heading into the final round this first half. And that's going to allow after the opportunity to get to seven rounds. So they're going to play this smart and safe, not really... Going for the hunt, which is a smart play. Flying is going to be sticking around alongside Viva. The two players with uh, with good health, with good HP, so they're going to be safe as well. So there you have it. Eight to five for Invictus, Dinko. Despite a few hiccups here and there, Invictus have looked pretty solid on the T side. The CD side for me is what worries me. Now I know Tom's mentioned that they look shaky at both their uh, the T and the CD side of Inferno, but if you're gonna, if I'm gonna, like you know, just have to choose one side, it's that B bomb side, which is just abysmal, and especially against Tiger yesterday, even that A bomb side looked quite terrible. Yeah, the Invictus CT side of Inferno is one that I'm not a fan of, across the board. <laughs> it's, just, it's just bad, but it should be enough against after gaming. I mean. I think that's always the caveat we have to bring to the server right now. Okay, Invictus looked rough, they have looked rough, but against after gaming, that shouldn't really matter. But they've been playing kind of well. I have to say, this is actually not a bad performance from after gaming. They've had a couple of mind-boggling moments, but for the most part, it's been pretty solid. They they're having the setups, they're working well on the crossfires. In fact, it's actually been Invictus, I feel, who have been making more mistakes, but they just have so many good individuals that they've been able to turn them around. I'm not a big fan of Shao Sage just going yeah, alone terrible. towards Banana. How many how many opening kills has it given to after gaming? Right, he's, he's turned into an an, an entry frag, um, and it's not gaining anything. It's not getting anything. You're not getting any information. You're like, oh, there's one at B. Well, duh, there's going to be at least one player at B, and you, you're basically just giving yourself, uh, making yourself like a free kill for your opponents, and just giving yourself some your opponents a man disadvantage. Just wang. It's all down to him, Dinko. He's got back up arriving in the form of Oi. And it's a 2v3. Can Wang hold on? The bomb is dropped at his feet. And backup has arrived. The cavalry in full force. And the timing of the peak from Wang. He could have got the free frag. But now he's blinded. Trying to stay alive. <laughs> the no scope onto FIFA. And Wang is a beast. He is a genius with an AWP. Someone... Recruit him from after gaming after this tournament because I feel like he is a diamond in the rough. Victors need an Aubrey. Put, put Wang uh -huh, in there. there destroyer. Go. Let's go. Well, Take Oi and give us a Wang. Hell yeah. Yeah. Like, put put Destroyer in after gaming. <laughs> put Wang in, in Victors. You got a good solo team here. Well, Wang, that was a glass cannon as well, Blood, just to add some sprinkles. That was definitely real nice to see. Wang again, this time over towards B. He's going to miss a shot, a rare miss. And Smoke is going to go down for the uh, the cross. And now Invictus, last shot of the half, looking for nine on the board. But Wang, he's under pressure. Smoke's going to do the left side. Of the brackets and a little bit of a gap. I love that. Flying, spots the feet, takes down Bingo. Oi. Because they've already taken the player down alongside, I don't know if they expect Oi to be here. And he's going to go into the smoke. He's running right into somebody. Oh, no. <laughs> Destroyer just turns and finds him. 
Oi, you had a nice try, but it doesn't work out. You got one opportunity, oh. <laughs> and you didn't capture it. Oh, Sakai, he's got a right <laughs> the destroyer. He heard oh. me. He's like, okay, I'll prove that I, I'm, I'm going to stay this to you. <laughs> oh, oh, oi. That, that was so painful. Destroyer's looking for more. What's Marek doing? It's the last round. Yeah, gym time. It's the last round, Marek. Just just go for it's it. Like, oh, I he's mean. just found out. He's just like, oh, yeah. oh no. Oh. What are you doing? What are you saving? Well, off I go. <laughs> get There's these no stats time. up here, boys. Get these stats. That's all they can get right now. You cannot win the round. If peek around the corner, shouts out gay. Getting rid of Marek. And if you had any questions as to the awareness of after gaming, that summarizes it. Now we go into the next half. It's going to be Invictus leading by three. If they win this pissed round, that's definitely going to set them up for a little bit more success of the CT side. This isn't a fair. We've never really been confident in for Invictus. But it is up against one of the lowest tier teams in this tournament. Do you kind of hope that we'd be seeing uh, Invictus show up? I want to see. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. That's just so funny. Well, it's going to be shots. Okay. Peeking down in towards middle. Important pit surround coming up here for Invictus. They're going to send four players for after gaming up Banana. Viva has gone to the utility. The smoke of the flash buying. The rest of the team are on Kevlar. And there's no kit here for Invictus. They've got one player on the B site with no kit on the team at all. And now the push comes through. It's a retake strategy. Tom was mentioning this yesterday. And I am definitely in agreement. Why are you going to play a retake strat if you have no kit? It just doesn't make sense to me. You're just well, limiting yourself massively. Maybe they like playing in hard mode, Dinko. Maybe uh, Invictus want to show that, hey, we're going to play retake. <laughs> Destroy it. Come on. Bro. Come on, bro. Come on. Man. Come on. Don't go for the jumping headshot. What is he doing? And Oi just pushes out. Like, okay. All right. Kills back and forth. But Chao Sai again. Viva left. Make that Terrible. Chao all Terrible. alone. What is that round from Invictus? That was... Terrible. Yeah, terrible. Abysmal. Crash. Just filth. every... Yeah. negative adjective you could think of but yeah it was just really really bad there from Invictus first of all okay you ha you're playing Viva into a CT that he smokes and then he smoke does nothing he's too lit to throw the smoke because he's not actually shoulder peeking he's just standing in CT so he doesn't get the info quick enough to actually be able to hold, hold them off for long so they just run straight into B they have the B bomb site with zero resistance whatsoever and they've won the round as soon as they do that there's no kit for Invictus Stroy starts looking at his own teammate in Banana we talk about how the um, we talk about how the uh the B bomb side defense for Invictus is kind of bad. And it's almost like they're like, yeah, it's bad. Wait, watch this. We're going to make it worse. Why is flying continuing to face? You got the kill. You've, you've got a, a big opening. You found bingo. Without barely taking any, well, not taking any damage, in fact. Why are you facing again? As we should be seeing a hit coming in here from after gaming. Oi. Announcing his intentions. Spots a player out. Chao Sage. Whoa, that's a dangerous game, but... And it's going to be Marek just pushing in through the smoke. Macton in hand, charging on in. And guess who's waiting? <laughs> Shao Sake. But he completely whiffs the deagle spray. And Marek, he's, uh, he's blessed, Inko. And now the bullets from Viva land. And Viva's down to 19 HP. And his force buy has just, well, really netted nothing. Apart from the one kill on to Bingo. And if I'm Invictus, I just go for the save here. It's really not worth it. Oh, but flying, he's got another one. It's Sakai picked up. And yeah, like you said, getting back onto the site. The bomb has just been planted, but they're taking too much damage here. Save the Deagles into the next round. You're going to have nothing anyway if you were to attempt this. So they're going to have a chance in the next round to, yet again, try and pull an Invictus Deagle round. Just a whiff shot so across the board there from Shao Gay And um, Viva. They could have won that round. You know, if Shao Sege gets that kill, that should have been a free one. And they had another opportunity with Viva. He should have been able to pick that up. Then then they're in a position, thanks to flying, they already had them at advantage, but they've they followed that up. And for me, there's a chance in, in which Invictus actually win that round. But a couple of missed opportunities.
and it doesn't go their way. After gaming, we'll be picking up an 8th round, and they will have the rifles mixed with the MAC-10 into this next one. So it should be a 9-9 scoreline coming right up. And this is already more of a fight than probably anybody was expecting from after, but I, I think they're kind of underrated. I think we we've kind of... Uh, well, mainly Mitch and Tom, but I think they've, they've really painted an awful picture of after. And I mean, they're not a team that are good by any means, that's for sure. But they're not as bad as we may think. I think they've got a little bit of something. They're definitely better than the likes of Fuat as we seen yesterday. They're definitely not the most dreadful team I've ever seen. Well. Oh. Oh. Oh, oh, oh my lord. The timing, the timing, the timing on that peak. The bomb's down, Dinko. They've lost three players. The three CTs now lying in wait. And yes, Sakai is heard flying just leg it towards B. But does it really matter? Does it really matter? It has all gone wrong. Well... <clears throat> I just want to bring bring a uh, just want to retract my statement from the previous round, but and uh, apologize to to Mitch and Tom. Uh, they were one hundred percent correct. No, that's that's not a good round from after, is it? They have just completely bumbled this. Well, they have a chance to try and recover it though, and it's going to be Sakai picking up too. It's flying and shouts out gay. My statement is reinstated, and well. Bingo. He looks down into towards Banat. It's a peek around the corner from Destroyer. And they're going to do it. They're going to pick up the round. Surely here, Viva oh, gets one, but he cannot flick back. That? And Sakai picks up a 3k. Invictus oh throwing away God. an absolute golden opportunity <laughs> after gaming. Not a good round, but nonetheless recovered. How does that all go wrong for both of them, Dinko? For both of them, after gaming... It all goes wrong here at Banana, and then Invictus, they decide to crap the bed as well. That was... I felt like that was almost unlosable. Like, it was an unwinnable round for after gaming there. The 4v2, bombs down, you're running out of time. The CDs know exactly where you guys are. You know there's a flank coming in from CD spawn. The timing on the peak for, uh, towards CD... That was just terrible. You know, Saber getting two separate 1v1s when both the CDs knew where exactly where it was coming in from. I don't know why the player with the AK-47 didn't peek earlier. It's just... Uh... I know Tom said it's going to be the fastest day where, you know, it's going to be two O's for all the teams. But I did have my reservations about Invictus Dinko. And, uh... Surprise, surprise, I'm correct again. Ah. <sighs> It's, uh, it's a bit annoying because we know that Victors should be performing much better than this. We've seen it before. We know they can perform much better than this, but they have been pretty dire in these last couple of games, right? It's, they're getting wins under their belt for sure, but they're, they're still in a situation where they should be playing better. And what well, oi, their ex teammate taking down Viva. Shouts out, gay. Okay. We'll trade it out. And now with 39 seconds left after looking to, uh, Take out the same bombs a little bit. Try and pull a rotation. It looks like they're just going to go back over towards B. Look what they've got. A player behind enemy line. Sakai's in CT spawn. How is Bottle allowed this? Like, what is Bottle, bro? Uh, uh, <laughs> you know what? Probably him dying was the best thing that could have happened because at least now they know there's a flank in, but it doesn't matter. Because Sakai's got the kill on the Shao Sage. Round's done. Invictus, why do they keep picking Inferno? Why, why do they keep picking Inferno? It, it's it's terrible. The, the, the CD side is one of the worst I've seen from a team. I mean, there are worse CD sides. But for a team who are like, oh, they're probably top three, top four in Asia. You know, and They're definitely the third best team in China. And probably a top three, top four team in the entire region. And for a team like that, to keep picking a map, you expect to see better things from them. But this CD side is just garbage. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry for sounding so mean early in the day. I'm out of coffee. But you sound so and correct. What? <laughs> it's, facts be facts, right? I mean, you, you have to call it out. You can't just be like, oh my god, you know, what a play from after gaming to steal that round away. I mean, kudos to Sakai for getting the sneak in, but it shouldn't have happened. It's not supposed too to many work holes. like that.
too many holes on the defense, and especially on a map like Infer of Inferno, where yeah. you have all these narrow corridors, you got to have the protocols right. I'm sorry, you don't know Counter Strike if you think this is uh, a, yeah. a good CD side. Yeah, and there's so many, so many holes in this defense for uh, for Invictus, and obviously Wang and the boys are gonna gonna penetrate those if you keep letting them open. So, minute and 35 seconds left, rounds. Virtually just begun already. Oi has top banana control. A little bit more of a passive setup here from Invictus. Viva is going to take a lot of damage on board. This one of those. Uh, this is one of those Invictus buys, right? It's like three players can get rifles. The rest of you mm. go down. You got this. Is we've seen this in so many scenarios where Invictus have been able to do this. Even even when they're just purchasing up from the start of the round, they'll invest everything when they've got um, enough money. This is something they're very comfortable with. So I'm not in a world in which I, I don't see this. I'm working out from Victus. This is certainly still one they can win. They might be able to recover from the previous errors in the last round. And Sakai up in the apartments. He's got Bingo here joining him. Let's see if this works out from Victus now as the executing towards this A bomb site's about to come through. I think the setup's pretty good right now from Victus. This should be good. For at least a couple of kills here. Shouts again comes off the mid position, but destroyer. The first pillar of support. You've also got flying just peeking up the graveyard, but three kills out of nowhere quickly come through. How? And it's gonna be Oi and Sakai getting them in. Just Viva. 15 HP. He's not winning this round. How, where did those kills come from? I thought Invictus had that one in the bag. The rotation was, was perfect. They even had a player peering down mid, just checking. Okay, are they there? They saw the bomb getting dropped in pit, and out of nowhere, Wang. Sakai, Oi, they get four kills immediately. And now they know. They know. They spotted out Viva. Viva knows the jig is up. There's nothing much he can do. He's going to fall on back. But he's still fancying this Dinko. He's got a smoke. He's got a Deagle. 16 HP and a Dream. And AK-47 will be retrieved. And Viva showing uh, some good common sense. Falling on back. He is also, of course, the, the top fragger for his side. And in the server as well. But right now, after gaming, they're in 11 rounds. And Invictus, uh, this is just terrible, man. This is just terrible from them. And, and, and the thing is, it's not about just about this matchup. It's about later on when they face off. Let's be real. We assume that Invictus are going to make it to the playoffs, right? Looking at especially how certain other teams have completely crapped the bed. Mm -hmm. And they're going to keep picking Inferno because they keep doing this. It's like it's the, the definition of insanity. You, you keep doing the same thing over and over and over again, hoping things are going to change. And they don't, <laughs> so they don't switch teams, anything up. So many teams do that in Asia, though. And it's like they refuse to change their playstyle. They refuse to believe what they're doing is wrong. It's like the problem with the region overall, though. You get How many times have we seen European coaches go to China and have to leave because they're not listening to him? <laughs> they just refuse to think that their playstyle's wrong. But oh, he gets two kills as he runs towards top banana. He catches out Shasa again, Viva. Terrible behold yet again. Terrible round from Invictus Gaming. It's 12 to 9 after gaming might just take inferno if this keeps up i feel like they've, they've done what's required uh i think they know that this defense doesn't matter if it's a or b is just paper thin from invictus <laughs> and if i'm invictus i'm just throwing the towel right now they don't seem to have any idea how to approach a cd side we haven't seen any aggression from them we haven't seen any map control being exerted the, the banana control has been non-existent so far uh, and playing towards A, they kind of have this crossfire we saw uh, towards A bomb site again, just getting just completely wrecked by the AKs from uh, after gaming. Where is the where are the map control plays? Where, where are they even forcing after gaming to sweat even a little bit to exert some control over the map? No, they're just giving everything for free. Bananas for free. Bracket controls for free, mids free, apartments is free. And after gaming's like, okay, we have all the real estate in the world. We can do anything we want. We can they can literally go for a B hit, then immediately swing towards A, then again swing back towards B, all in a span of 20 seconds because of the freedom they have. And at time Stinko, they've even given up control of CD spawn, where after gaming just walking in for free. This is just terrible. Probably one of the worst CD sites I've seen so far in PAL 2020. And especially on a map like Inferno, that's that's damning, man. That's just damning. Oh, it is. And I fear for Invictus. Not in the series. Just yet. 
I, I do feel like this will be mid unnecessarily long for Invictus just because of the underperformance here on this map. And while Viva getting one kill on towards Marek, it's a, a good early kill coming in for the CT side. That's the aggression we've been waiting to see. Much better start. Much better start. And we, uh, we spoke about banana control just being given for free. Finally, they're taking it. Finally, they have a player playing towards bracket. They're forcing after to use up some utility to get some control. The destroyer finds bingo as well. That's scary. Flashbang's too deep though, but Viva just peeks out with Chao Sage. Where was this all this while? I mean, where was this Invictus CD side all this while? It's much better. Although that was not ideal from Destroyer. It goes to the wide swing with no information, but it's okay. Viva's there. Shuts it down. 3k from Viva. Great work from Viva and Xiao Sage to, like, just take control of Banana. What worries me is I, I don't feel they're going to keep doing this. And for after gaming, this is the first time they're actually having to contend with such aggression from the CTs. And, yeah, they got caught off guard. But I'm expecting them to just adapt real quickly here. And they're going to mix things up. And that's when... Invictus are all going to get tested again. If Invictus can break down the money here of after, that's... He's going to set them up for more success in flying. Finally. He's been waiting. He's a player that doesn't really make too many mistakes, but... If you watch him in the apartments, he doesn't get bored that he's, no one's coming his way, right? He won't start making those stupid plays and peeking down middle, looking for fights. He just does the same thing, right? He just goes into the apartments and, and searches around. He doesn't mm. overextend. And if they don't come his way, that's fine. He doesn't put himself in a position where he's going to give away his life. And this time, when he finally gets rewarded for his patience, for his methodical approach, he can run, come right into his crosshair and he takes both down. I know it's not going to really happen, but I would love to see someone like Wang and uh, our man himself that is uh, flying on the same team. That'd be great. Shaosak and Viva, very ballsy. Shaosak has just been very, very, very uh, rough with his approach on this entire map. He's a player we, we look up to as a guy who doesn't make too many mistakes. He's a guy who plays a more has a more cerebral approach to the game of Counter-Strike compared to many of his other Chinese brethren. And uh, so far here... He's been going for unnecessary peaks, unnecessary plays, just some weird stuff from him. But you know what? Invictus, they have seemed to have slapped on a band-aid and are starting to slowly bring things back. Now won a couple of rounds back to back. And with that, the uh, the economy, which is flourishing for after, is now finally looking like uh, my bank account. It's looking pretty bad. Well, Shao Sege. He down Y. Man advantage available for Invictus, and Shao Sege keeps pushing forward against the pistols. And luckily, Marek looking the wrong way. Shao Sege, now is probably the best time to not go for this, but nonetheless, he has got uh, a good position at least now. I feel like he's dead, blah. There's too many players here. Shao Sege surely goes down. He's gonna, have, yep, he's, he's out of there. Luckily, Viva available. We'll pick up bingo, but this is unnecessary, right? You're just losing money. You're just hemorrhaging cash at this point. Just take those kills and stay back. Completely agree. Viva gets taken down to the B-bomb side empty. They've, they've even got a gun now, Dinka. Now, Sakai is low, and Oi doesn't have any Kevlar, but yeah, there we go. You saw him, Viva. You, you saw them. You saw them. Why, why are you facing? Why are you facing? I'm so uncomfortable with this. It's 37 HP. Finally, he falls back. And now, flying is holding mid. Back up arrive. He's actually going to smoke off mid, which is uh, interesting. But Oi, 18 seconds. He's got to go for the play. He doesn't spot the head. He still gets to kill in Aviva. Can he find a second, though? He's got to cross on over. 10 seconds. But a bot will shut him down. What an unnecessarily expensive round for Invictus. But you know what? They don't lose it. Though. And now the buy is going to be coming in for after gaming. AK is all around. A glass cannon possible for Wang, and he's going to go for that. 
I'm not necessarily a very big fan of it, but the way he opens up some of these sites just with AWP single-handedly, and that's one thing we say about Wang, like individually he knows how to make it work. As a team after gaming, let's be real, there's no real synergy. So he doesn't really get set up that often, so he mostly gets his kills to his own individual plays. And I wonder, imagine if he plays on a team where who actually sets him up, who actually flashes for him. I feel it could be even more deadly. And the peak comes in from Vila. That was, I feel, unnecessary aggression from them. And now, Destroyer, left alone, holding down the fort towards brackets. That's going to force some aggression from the CDs at Banana. They need to send a player back over towards A, meaning Bottle will have to hold on towards Banana, all wise lonesome. And right now, he's trying to get on top of the wall. There we go. It's all down to him, Dinka. What worries me for Bottle is if he gets taken down, a B-bomb side's done, and he doesn't have any utility as well as... Ooh, a slow little pig destroyer, a little slow on the trigger. Also another shot, but at least he's got backup, as his A-bomb side is looking like the focus of After Gaming's attention. Well, Flash goes up into the air. Well, 12, four rounds away from victory for both sides, but it's after gaming that hold the man advantage into round number 25. They're going to turn their attentions back to this B-bomb site, and Bottle was playing on top of the half wall. He comes off the angle and repositions into the B-bomb site on top of oh, First Oranges just at the right time. And now they come around the corner and he doesn't get a single kill, Blair. Terrible stuff yet again from the Invictus hold. They've lost two players. They've lost the round here. Just save, Chasse Gay. Just fall away and save, please. Why? 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 What do you gain? What do you gain? Your teammates aren't even near where... What are you doing? Come on. This is really triggering. Oh, stop it. Stop it. Oh, get me out of here. What the f***? <laughs> I can't. I can't anymore. <laughs> oh. Just like... Gay. Wait, 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 look, what? Hell, who's playing on his PC right now? This is not him. It's like, look, I know you have a little bit of money, but why are you hurting your economy? It's like punching yourselves in the in, in the nuts. Hit an AK, just give away an AK. Oh, you're not gonna get that back. And and, and after gaming, like they're already oh, they lost and, the and they lose well, destroyer. Yeah, uh, good job. That was dumb. Hey that flying, was wanna drop me? No, not really. <laughs> See? Come on. I mean, they yeah. can buy, right? I mean, that's, that's the thing. They can buy, but it's stupid. You give an AK-47, like you pointed out, Dinko, a gun which has a one-tap potential. You want to have that. That's There's no gun like that on the CD side. And it's just stupid. It's just brain the decision-making yeah. from yeah. a player okay. who's, who's been playing this game for a very long time, yeah. Dinko. I mean, obviously, there's going to be people in Twitch chat, which are geniuses and, and all that. And, and we do understand the fact, okay, the economy was not in a great spot for after... You know, if he gets a couple of kills, that's certainly a couple of rebuys to the T side. Doesn't and Invictus come out on top when it comes to the economy. But yeah, that it still doesn't make that a good decision. That That's still not worth it. There's just some uh, some very wacky plays coming out from Invictus. Um, timing on the flash, not good. Bottle doesn't get spotted out. Oh, he does. He does, but he pures that and actually gets a dink on. To Oi, Nate's gonna sail in, but luckily Oi's gonna be falling back from position. I would not want Destroyer to peek this. Wang's gonna be lying in wait. And Molotov's gonna flush out Destroyer from his position. That's uh, actually smart from Wang. Destroyer taking a little bit of damage. There's no one nearby to hear the flames tickling him. And here comes the hit towards B. But this time around, Dinko, it is Mr. Viva. He's got an AK, and I believe in Viva. He's gonna get the nade onto Oi. Perfectly placed, perfectly timed nade. And yet the rotation hasn't taken place. Although, yeah, sorry, my bad. I take that back. Shao Sage is there to bolster. He's going to peek in wide. <laughs> oh, what? Wang! That was a free kill and he misses it. He whiffs, Stinko. That was a terrible whiff. And Bingo's left alone. And Viva, trusty, reliable Viva. And 29 kills for him. One shy of dropping the 30 bomb. And the scores are tied again. And after gaming, they're going to buy up. They're 100% going to buy up here. Yeah, I have to say, Pretty impressive stuff from Vivo over the past couple of days. He hasn't really gone missing, so that's a positive for Invictus, at least. But 13-13, I feel like that was a very important round where uh, we're after going to start to think about that one. That's going to play out in their head a lot, especially Wang. I feel like this is going to be such an influential round for the end of this map. Wang missing that shot. It might just cause a couple of problems. 13-13, Invictus. They will be looking for victory here on Inferno. That's going to be the purchase up from After Gaming.
We'll get the 8K47s out. They won't have the AWP available. I believe so. <laughs> if they do, that's that's incredible. But why? It's kept $1,500 in the bank. Go to this next round. Invictus should be favorites to win 14. The buy is just, just better with a double AWP setup across the board. Shafts are gay and Destroyer picking up the double AWP setup. Viva's going to stick to the rifle. This is very reminiscent of yesterday's game against Tiger, where it looked like Tiger was winning, yet Invictus got the win in the end. As we do see, again, flurry of nades, flurry of uh, utility being deployed towards Banana. Invictus, at least so far, this Banana control has worked out for them. They have been pretty solid, especially Viva. As long as he's around, I have faith. Shao Sage with the AWP. Something which he does pick up at times and destroy her over towards a day bomb site. They're going to be sending a player back towards uh, towards A. It's going to be Viva. Now Shao Sagate playing all by his lonesome. He's going to be forced, waiting for the flash. Then he's going to go for the peak and he misses the shot. It just goes between three players. He's down to 17 HP and they're going to try and hunt him down here. But backup has arrived and it is Mr. Viva coming to aid his captain. Walking up through Banana. We've got Viva here on the side itself, playing towards the back lines. Also, Shao Sake, yeah, he's gonna hit the first shot, but he can't get away because Sakai is so down quick on the reply. Now Viva, looking for his 30th kill. He's got it, he's collected it, he's looking for more, but he'll only find the one. And that's a bit of a problem here for Invictus because now they've lost the B bomb site. Now the plank can come in and it has to be the retake attempt. What will just diving through on his own, Wang taking him away, of course. And now flying and destroyer probably looking at uh, a near impossible retake attempt. Fantastic stuff from Invictus yet again. Really makes sense. Wang rattling shots, but he's the only one whose position they know. Apart from that, there's nothing else they can do. They're going to be... They have 100 HP, so they can... They won't take two... They're going to take damage, but they might survive. Flying, looking for the exit. Sakai takes a bit so of damage, but it looks like they will all survive. Yeah. Yeah, he gets go. away. I, I just yeah. want to bring it back to that retake. Okay, fair enough. Viva and Shao Sage. You would have liked a little bit more production out of them. You would have liked at least more than, you know, three kills, we'll say. The one that they come out with a man advantage. That's the ideal situation from Victus. But, okay, they get one each. They, they pull it into three versus three. At that point, You've still got a chance to play for the retake. The bomb is already down. There's a smoke in for CT. Go for a boost. Throw a player up on top of that half wall boost. Get a player grouping up together in, in ruins and move forward as a unit back into the site. You have a three versus three, a chance to win the round. Utility still available on a couple of the players. Why is Bottle just deciding to run in through the smoke on his own? Why is that the most logical play in his head? It doesn't make sense. And while Shao Sagay getting aggressive, gonna catch out that opening pick. And Invictus at least handed a man advantage into this round to try and make up for their previous errors. I usually don't uh, comment on Twitch chat, but there there is a gentleman who uh, who was who stated that uh, the round where Xiao Sage went in and just gave his life trying to go for exits, uh, I think he stated that. What do you say? Um, they had money and he was throwing to do damage. Is it hard to make sense of that move? Idiot casters. Listen, man, like, I don't know how many months you've been playing Counter-Strike and MG2, but that's not the play. I'm sorry. Like, just just, just shut up. That was a terrible play by any any stretch of the imagination. It's Viva. They're oh. going to line up for him. He's going to find just one, though. Marik with a quick trade. But Xiao Sage, he's got cover. He's got backup. Destroyer has arrived, and they might not be expecting Xiao Sage's position. Because of the shot bingo, if he doesn't check this, it's going to be a slaughter. And Xiao Sage, he times it to perfection. Finds both the kills. And despite Destroyer getting taken down, Xiao Sage is going to win the round. Scores are tied, 14 all. That was, a, that was a good play from Invictus. And now, decisions to be made by After Gaming. The money is looking kind of grim. It is looking kind of grim. And if I'm them, Dinko, I just go for a light buy and try to play for overtime. I think that's probably the call right now for them. The only one that's kind of feasible. Oh, yeah, fantastic round out from Shao Gay. Destroyer doing good work on the AWP as well. 
That's that guy just delivering. And he, you know, that's the that's the player we know he is. You know, just this is rock for the team where he can show up. He's just been making a few questionable moves um throughout this map. But 14 to 14. Invictus now two away from taking us to the second map. With them. What their map win under their belt. This was their map pick as indicated by the top left uh, left uh, graphic. And well, Invictus coming into this, they should have been winning this much more cleanly, much more convincingly. And this is exactly why I feel like Inferno is not a good map for them right now. It's it's good. I mean, in terms of... No, no, that, that's contradictive. I mean, it's okay. It's in the middle. It's not a good map, but it's in the middle. They can play it, but not to a good level. Right now, it's... Definitely one of the maps they make the most mistakes on and on the CT side just looks so damn weak. I don't think flying gets involved enough. I think he's predictable. I think he's underutilized in the defense and he's such an important player. And that's what? exactly <laughs> what the <laughs> hell is that? <laughs> Five is kills. Spray? He gets the ears. That is so sick from flying. As what I was is saying, that spray that, range? That ex that's exactly what I mean, Blur. Oh... He's, 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 he's something, man. He, he's something special. I feel bad for him. Look at this. Oh my God. Okay, that's one. It's a full commit spray for the first kill. See the second guy. Again, full spray. And he gets the second, the second kill. That is just disgusting. That is actually that is filth. That yeah. is so nuts. He's so good. He's, he's by far the best player on this team i don't even think it's close like okay viva still has big moments but he's the best player he's just so good he has yeah, he, this he, polish and he's true. just he's he's just got something else about him he is uh he, he does have that extra depth that is very lacking in a lot of these asian players like you look at someone like ronin from what's i for example raw aim great mechanical ability just no brains unfortunately still too young and then you look at someone like good old flying Good aim, great sprays to clearly solve with their great game sense and just a great understanding of how the game of Counter-Strike can ebb and flow. But let's talk about it later on. 15-14, yeah. Dinko. And a hit is on to its A and Sakai's gonna open it up. Flying, just oh. good for one. But Destroyer is still there delivering death. But now it's a 3v3. Bomb down. Bomb has been planted. And the retake, it's on. And Victor's looking to try and close it. He's gonna be setting up the utility. Two players in the pit is going to be very difficult to deal with if you're Invictus. They haven't really been good on the retakes, and now they have a lack of Molotovs. They have a lack of utility to try and clear this pit out, but they still find a kill, a peek from Bingo. I believe he was just going for the info, but it doesn't work out. Marek, luckily, with a good kill on Oi. He's playing on the smokes, a good frag from him, and Viva goes down. It's overtime. Coming right up, the bonus rounds between After Gaming and Invictus. This is the... This is the game that we expected to be the longest out of the three. I think when you take a look at after they were slowly starting to get better yesterday and Invictus have been pretty trash. I have to say they've been can, in a weird we, spot at the moment. Can we have a small little violin, PG, like a sad violin playing for Viva? Because the guy's dropped 31 kills and he's done everything he could alongside flying. And uh, yet here we are in overtime. They still haven't won. He got over 30 kills in regulation. And this is where you start playing the sad violin music, which hopefully won't be copyright struck on Twitch. <laughs> Those of you tuning in, uh, if you have a 4K TV or a 4K monitor, you should definitely Not check out a stream <laughs> on, uh, on 4K on YouTube. Because it, it's something. It's a treat for your eyes. Yeah. It definitely is. Well, Destroyer is going to take himself a kill onto Bingo. An advantage of play right now for Invictus as Sakai wants to go around the corner as well here. It's going to be running down. Destroyer, nice Ooh. shot. Quick out to the right side. And maybe this is where we get the step up. Look at this. Big peek from Shoutside Gabe. He's always going to find that kill. I'm not aware. Oh, Wang's not aware that it's going to be Viva, but it still doesn't matter. The flick to the right side. He knows Shoutside Gabe's in Banana. Surely they're aware of that. They're pre-firing, but it doesn't matter. Marek still going down to Shoutside Gabe. What a god. <laughs> Three kills picked up in 16 to 15. And Victus will win the first round of overtime. Well, convincing start. Still, three more rounds to find for Invictus. Again, just a reminder that this is the R this is an RMR event, a Valve Shanks sanctioned event, which is why there is uh, a ten thousand dollar start money, unlike the sixteen K which you see in most other events, meaning 
that you have to be a little careful about your buys and your uh, the weaponry and whatnot you have if you lose two rounds back to back. Although, it, gotta say, it is a little bit more forgiving on the T side, Tinko, but CD side, that's when it gets scary. At least for Invictus, they have managed to avoid that scare. Oh, the flashbang! It is beautiful! But oi, good for just one. Viva gets destroyed, and Xiao Sage, he's just gonna get the hell out of dodge. Well, they're starting to turn their attentions over to this B-bomb site. On the T side, you see the vast majority of them were there, but they're gone now, Blair. They're going to try and go back to A. They left themselves a couple of options. And the A bomb site is the, the, map, the side of the map where they have decided they want to finish things. So at least it's looking that way at the moment. Destroyer with the AWP holding the cross from the cubby. It's not exactly a position you can fall back from, but it is a bit of an off angle. And that smoke is going to go up, and that does force Destroyer away. He's going to try and reposition, but it comes on to flying. In the previous round, he only managed one. The round before that, should I say, on the hole before he was neutralized by the Molotov. But now he's playing inside of the site. And it comes down to this hold. Here comes the attack. After sending the players through, Destroyer going for the big flick, but it's not going to work out. Instead, it's flying with the first headshot. Destroyer gets another. Again, it's another situation where flying's only getting one kill there. And Destroyer as well. And I think that's a big problem for Invictus. That they're rarely getting the multi-kills on these holds. When after sending the attacks into the bomb sites, it's always one for one, right? He's never getting the, the second kill. There's no one ever stepping up and hitting the multi-kill to give the advantage to Invictus into the retakes. And they're a man down now as well. This is not going to be easy. Otto is just trying to play with the smokes, but he has been pretty rough this game so far. And he's going to go down to Oi. He's been playing pretty well against his ex-teammates, 23 and 21. And they'll tie things up, 16-16. 4K for him, a huge round. And I agree with you. I feel like the positioning is just really off for flying. I, mean, I feel he'd be much better from the pit position. And it's not like after gaming are doing anything crazy towards pit, right? It, it, they just, you know, they maybe one smoke, you can still play around it. And even this hole from the bomb site, I feel like at times both of them are looking in the same direction, in the same position. Like Bottle having to flick upwards, uh, that sort of thing. You have two players there. One can just watch towards balcony, one can watch towards the entrance towards uh, the, the bomb site. And it just feels like there are no comms going on. There's no real cohesion in the way they're holding it. Which leads to them relying on individual plays. Ois is gonna walk past. Shao Sage, this could be the greatest play of the match. He is being a genius. He's gonna find one. Bomb's picked up. AWP AK. He has to decide, but wang, he doesn't miss those, Dinko. And the scare will be neutralized. Bottle walks out straight to his death. Wang has been a rock for the side of after gaming. And that got so, so very scary. But Wang will deliver. Destroyer at least catches out Sakai. Now a 3v2 flying. What can he do? Because Wang, he doesn't miss many shots, especially when he's holding an angle. Fine. Now moving forward in towards the ruins, the Molotov goes down. And now it's going to be Bingo with the headshot. Destroyer out of that. And then somehow after have taken the lead here in overtime, but they are two away from taking map number one. Stealing away Invictus's map pick. What an upset this would be if they could go on to win this series. That would just be ridiculous. Yeah, like you said, Viva, 31 kills, 23 deaths, flying up there in 25 and 16. Didn't really see a whole lot of action with the regulation on the defensive side. He was mainly in the apartments, not really getting a whole lot done. They kept losing the B-bomb site, and the retake attempts were never really going to work out for him, uh, Invictus. So here in overtime, it's after taking the lead, and Invictus scrapping together an AK-47 purchase as we go into this one. They're going to be trying to uh, figure out what they want to do. And there's no open play. There's just going to be the AKs across the board. Which is a little surprising considering how solid Viva usually is on the T side of, of Inferno with the AWP. But yeah, I mean, he's been solid with every other gun as well. So might as well let him wield the AK-47. Shao Sage, once more Dinko. He's going to dodge the nade though. Takes a bit of damage, but that's not too terrible. 57 HP, still kind of low. Honestly, it's, I, I gotta say, like, Pal Summer, compared to Pal Fall, it, it's completely, uh, it's, it's night and day compared to how some of these teams are playing.
Like, th there are no favorites. There are literally no favorites. Like, everyone can beat anyone, apart from Huatzai, who can't seem to beat anyone. And Tai Lu and Vichy are the two best teams. Vichy even looking better than the previous pal. So, yeah, apart Vici from Tai Lu and Vichy. Vichy looking better than Tai Lu right now. 100%. And apart from... The, and Tai Lu is just like a, like a sledgehammer, right? There's no finesse. They're just going to kill you. Aim. <laughs> and, and, and that's the thing. Apart Vici from those two teams... <laughs> except for Vichy, yeah. Well... I want, to see day, it. I want to see it in the playoffs here. One I want to day. see them grow into it. Jam Young, day, Vichy's Kaze coming together, using the power to try and beat Tai Lu in the playoffs. We'll see. And what? Oh, oh, that is unlucky. Shao Sergei, he still takes the kill. And now he's running around ruins as well. Bingo. He's got to go huge here. He's got another player lying in with. Oh, do they check Marek? Okay, he gets one, but he's checked by Shao Sergei. He does go down a three versus two. A nice take from Invictus. Why don't they do this all the time, Bly? Why don't they look this good all the time? They're so poised, ready to go, and they can even win these fights. Sakai just whiffing the worst spread I've ever seen, and now Huang trying his best to get back into the bomb site, but it will have to take a monumental error here from Invictus. They'll have to peek completely. Oh! Well, see how he doesn't miss many, but this is one time he does miss. I, I feel like... If it got that kill, that was a chance because he knew exactly where both the players are. But Invictus, a little bit of a resurgence, then hope they get to round number 17 now. Bear in mind, they need to win all three rounds on the T side. To close this out in overtime. But is that going to happen? I don't know. The worrying thing for after is if they lose a the next round and uh, Invictus get to map point, Dinko. And let's say, let's assume that they get wiped out. That is, they don't save any weapons. They're going to be screwed. They're going to have no money. Look at the money they have in the bank. Virtually nothing off of that buy. Wang going for a wild flick. Xiao Sage again taking a bit of damage. And Wang still duking it out. I'm not a big fan of this. Going to take a just a warning shot through the wall. Falls back to a more safer angle. That's going to allow Invictus the opportunity. Try and push up towards his brackets and... Uh, Apps control. I like this reaction from Invictus. They've gotten, they've just snatched control of the uh, top mid and uh, apartments away from uh, from after. But after haven't budged. They still have three players, and the timing is everything. Dinko, Wang. Oh, I thought it was going to be pushing out towards Banana. No, it's just going to be holding a closer angle. And the rotation, is it taking place? It is. Oi is falling away. He is fading away. Now two players holding the line. It's a wide swing from Viva. The flash doesn't really catch Wang, but the bullets do find him. Now Marek, 1v5 on the side. He's good for one. He's good for two. He's running out of bullets. Oh. He finds another kill. Marek is a beast. As Oi, he chimes in with a frag of his own. And somehow, a magical round from Marek. And Destroyer left alone in a 1v2. Bomb yet to be planted and 35 seconds on the clock. This has to be a clutch one by Destroyer. You like to lose this. It's probably going to be the map loss. Smoke. And when he has got a smoke, he's also got a Molotov. He'll use the Molotov to the left side to prevent the push from ruins. He'll use the smoke close. What this does is actually gives his opponents a huge advantage and gives them a lot more map control to play with. But he's going to try and work with it, and it's not going to work out. Sakai takes him down on the M4. And yeah, I'm, I hit that from Destroyer. That literally allows both of the players to converge. Like, just come together and attack him. That, that's so bad. If he throws it deep into CT, that turns it into a one versus one fight from the, the player that's coming out of Banana. It also neutralizes and severs the information flow of the player in CT spawn. And also, he's already put the Molotov down for the ruins anyway. So I feel like he definitely needed to throw that smoke a little deeper. He probably would have had a better chance to win that. But we're not going to take it away from Marek. What a hold from him. Three huge kills. And he delivers an 18th round off the back of it. 18-17. And that too, it's an M4A1, mind you. Not too many bullets. Well, here we go. Here we go. Nade in the face. Shao Sage. How many nades has he tanked in Co? And he finally spots him out in Marek. He has woken up here. As after gaming are now one round away, or rather four kills away to be precise, from snatching away Invictus's map pick. And honestly, honestly, I have to say, Invictus don't deserve to win this map. They have been abysmal. It's their map pick again. They're a top three team in Asia. 
and it has just been so rough. Apart from hero plays from, from uh, good old Flying and Viva, everyone else has been so flat. As a hit comes in towards A, it's a Hail Mary play. The Waterfall out, and Oi and Sakai, they're shredding them to pieces. It's a 2v4. It's Viva and Destroyer. What more could he ask from Viva? Does he have to drop a 40 bomb to win this one? Well, he might just might have to, but Wang's going to decapitate him in mid-air, Dinko. And after gaming, they're going to take the map. They're going to pull off the win on the map pick from 